I'm glad to be here. I was last in, uh, in Provo in November to have a business review with my Vital Smarts team, uh, uh, Ben. I uh, had the great opportunity as well to interview Joseph for a strategic project that we're doing at Emerson, my company, and uh, also to spend some time with Emily. And over lunch, they were asking, what's going on at Emerson? And so as I began to describe some of the exciting things that are happening, they said, you know, that's a big idea. I said, well, yeah, thanks. <laughs> and they said, no, that's a big idea. And I said, well, you already told me that. And they go, no, this is a big idea. So I, I looked at him and I said, is there some kind of vital smarts secret code that I'm not picking up on? <laughs> so I have a big idea and my hope is it's going to be yours as well. Oh, thank you. That will help. So here it is, and in order to approach this big idea, I need you to use your imagination. Now, I know some of us are in that PLC phase of day right now, post-lunch coma. <laughs> I need you to use your imagination. Now, I told my son I'm actually attending the world's largest con uh, convention of extroverts, so help me with this here. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to use your imagination. Imagine this scenario. Monday morning, you're back in your office, you've returned back from the REACH conference. Nine o'clock Monday morning, your chief financial officer walks into your office, looks you square in the eye, and says, what would they say? What emotion would you feel at the moment? Would you be jumping for joy at the sight of your CFO sh showing up in your office? Would you be in a state of shock? Would you uh, try to flee the fear? Would you melt into a puddle of cold sweat, fully anticipating that your CFO is the one who's gonna be initiating a crucial conversation with you about the future of the learning and development function? What would they say to you? Now, what would you like them to say but what would they say to you if they showed up to your office on Monday morning? Now I want you to come to my office. Five years ago, it was the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. It was a quiet morning at our St. Louis campus. We've got about 2,300 employees there who support the performance of 90,000 other employees in 140 countries, 215 manufacturing locations, and probably 50 to 75 sales offices and innovation centers. Nine o'clock in the morning, Frank Delacola shows up to my office. He's our CFO. He walks up to me, looks me square in the eye, and he says, Terrence, your team has shown me where real value creation comes from. I realize now in our old way of doing things, the only thing I valued as CFO is that people showed up. Not that they did anything with it. I realized now I had the price tags on the wrong things. He said, Terrence, as CFO of Emerson, what you and your team has done is very valuable to me. It's valuable to our employees. It's valuable to our company. It's valuable to our shareholders. <laughs> what? You know, I've been in learning and development for 24 years and two things happened in one minute that most of us would dream to have happen. One of these happened over our whole career. First is, the CFO walks into the learning and development office. <laughs> with a smile on his face, no less. And in listening to him, I can't help but think he's actually accusing us of delivering shareholder value. How does that happen? Frankly, gang, I would have been disappointed if this conversation hadn't took place. So I wanna share the story. My story, I think, is gonna become your story. In order to do that, though, I wanna give you a quick state of the training industry report. I think you're gonna have a much deeper dive on this later on this week, but I wanna give you the state of the industry from really a global director of training's perspective. A couple of things that I think should cause us to be a little restless, a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, this source comes from Training Magazine, a survey Training Magazine conducted some time back. 
They said 95% of learning and development managers have never once met a C-level stakeholder in their company. Coupled with that, 85% of anyone holding a title of training manager or learning and development manager or a director of learning and development have never read a copy of their own company's organizational or strategic plan. I guess we're too busy reading those books on adult learning theory and gamification. <laughs> the ASTD State of the Industry Report indicates that only 7% of learning and development functions measure the business impact of their efforts. I think these first three industry indicators are the causal relation to this next one. This is the one that's sobering. Less than half of Fortune 500 companies integrate learning and development as part of their strategic planning process. So when it comes to large organizations, when it comes to their strategic planning process, learning and development is not even brought to the table. And then finally, I don't need to cite my industry source in this. I hear this in the hallways today and tomorrow. Isn't it true that in times of economic constraint or restraint, we're usually the first ones to take the hit? We're also usually the learning and development function is the lagger in the economic recovery. We're the last ones to kind of come back up to speed fully funded. And when I see industry indicators like this, gang, it tells me that in many of our organizations, learning and development is not doing all that it could or should be doing to help its organization meet its business and strategic goals. This has been a concern of mine, so I have an idea. But the state of the industry is also creating, I think, a state of confusion. And I'm gonna make some bold statements here, and I'm comfortable with it. One of the ideas is this. Business leaders, many of your C-level stakeholders or top executives in your organization, are often ambivalent or unclear about the role, the purpose, and value of learning and development. How many of you, just raise your hand, you can see me better than I can see you, but how many of you would agree with that statement in your organization? Okay, good number of you here. And I think I know why. I think the reason why business leaders are unclear about the role, the purpose, and value of learning and development is we're often unclear about ourselves. And if we can articulate in a clear and a compelling and a cogent and a concise manner what our role and purpose is, that confusion is amplified in the C-suite. So we have a state of the industry, we have a state of confusion. And I'll also suggest that for many learning and development professionals, we've been long suffering from an identity crisis. I'll give you an example of this. In my last three roles as a learning and development leader, I came from outside the organizations. Sometimes my role was part startup. Sometimes I came into a turnaround situation. Sometimes it was accelerated growth, realignment, sometimes sustaining success. In those last three leadership roles, without exception, I, I met one-on-one -on -one with each one of my staff. I asked each one of them the same question. And that question was, what do you think the role and purpose of learning and development is here where we work, here at Emerson, here at SC Johnson, here at my other company? Without exception, the answer I got to what do you think is our role and purpose is, well, here's what we do. It's not what I asked. I didn't ask what we do. I asked, what is our role and purpose? And this is probably the most common manifestation of our, entity, our identity crisis. So here's the idea. What we do is not our role and purpose. However, our role and purpose defines what we do. So two steps to get a seat in the C-suite. These are not difficult, they're pretty straightforward. One is to define the role and purpose of learning and development in your organization. And secondly, ensure that every one of your initiatives is built on agreed to and well-defined business outcomes. So let me walk you through this. Step one, define the role and purpose of learning and development in your organization. And the goal in doing this is really by way of a consensus approach. The value in doing this is this. If you have a clearly defined role and purpose, it defines the scope of your strategy. It also helps you identify and prioritize your tactics. 
Many learning functions are operating devoid of strategy because they don't have a defined role and purpose and they think tactics will carry them through and they won't. It also helps you formulate a policy. Now, a lot of us hate the word policy, but I actually like the framework from an operations perspective. A policy is a framework for making informed and consistent business decisions. And those departments who don't have a clearly defined role and purpose, we don't have a framework. We're always saying yes. We have no basis for separating training needs from training wants. We're kind of working in the fire hose approach. And then finally, having a defined role and purpose sets your organizational true north or your mission. So I have a tool for you. It's something that you'll be able to download on your app. It's there right now. It's a three-page sheet called the Learning and Development Leader's Guide to Defining the Role and Purpose of Training. I found that my value in 24 years as a learning and development professional is not in what I say, but in the questions I ask. There's 15 key questions in this handout, and I want you to start asking these questions of the business leaders in your organization. A couple interesting questions. What is the purpose of learning and development in our organization? Why is learning and development important? This third question, who are the markets? I have three markets I support. I have clients, I have customers, I have consumers. My clients are the senior executives and stakeholders. My customers are the people that send their people to training. The consumers are the people who actually show up. Each one of them have different needs or wants. There's 15 questions here. Here's how we facilitate the exercise. We have 15 questions, we have 15 flip charts. I'm in a meeting with my executives. We answer each question at the end of answering all 15 questions. We go to each flip chart one at a time and we underline one key word or phrase. At the end of that, we take all the key words or phrases and we put it into a one paragraph summary that captures all those key words or phrases from those 15 questions that says, we believe the role and purpose of training is, or learning and development is, and now we have a clearly defined role and purpose. And the beautiful part of this is, I have the leaders buy-in, because it was their idea. So I tried this out with a senior leader. Second week on the job, I, I set an appointment with them. I said, Todd, it's really important for me to know what's important to you. I wanna know how I could best support your business. I'd like to ask you some questions, and I pull out these questions as I start asking him. By the second question, he gets up, walks around me, goes to his door, slams it, stands blocking the door, and he looks at me with a scowl, and he says in a menacing voice, who are you and where have you come from? I really didn't know how to answer. So I said, Todd, could you rephrase that? I'm not quite sure I'm tracking with you. So he unfolds his arm, he walks back, sits down and goes, I know who you are, I know where you're from, but here's my problem. And he starts pointing over to the direction where my office was, and I reported then to corporate marketing. And he, he points over there and goes, look, I've been their biggest customer for three years now. Almost everyone in that department owes their livelihood to me. And you're the first person who's ever come in to ask me how I think I could best support your business. And you've been here, what, all of two weeks? And he said, Terrence, you're my strategic partner. He said, I need you to sit at the table with my business leaders to drive our business forward. A month later, my boss, my boss's boss, and everyone they hired except me were walked out the building. And I was appointed to a team of six executives to drive the direction of the company going forward. I'm the learning and development geek. But all I did was make sure that everything I was doing with, was aligned with the businesses. So with that said, the next thing you need to do is make sure that every learning and development initiative you have is built on defined and agreed to business outcomes. It's been my experience that learning and development professionals tend to talk in terminology that's irrelevant to business leaders. We talk about learning objectives. At the end of the workshop, the participant will be able to do 
and then we throw in a bunch of Weasley action verbs. <laughs> Learning objectives do not resonate with business leaders. Business outcomes do. So a simple discipline, and I'll be speaking more about this in my breakout session this afternoon, is this. Anytime I have a request for a new major learning initiative, I just simply go to the executives and I say this. Complete the sentence. This initiative will be a success when... And you know the, question, the answer I almost always get? You know what? That's a really good question. Let's take some time to think about this. The value we'll bring is the questions we ask not not the answers we deliver. So make sure that everything that you do is built on agreed to and well-defined initiatives. So what I've tried to give you are two things, a process to follow and tools to use. Download the 15 questions and then email me. Let me know how they go for you. I hope my big idea, which has allowed me to get the seat with the C-suite for my last three jobs, will give you that same opportunity. Thank you very much.